So for this project, I'm going to be working on these five elevator car switches. Now these would be found in manual elevators. So you would turn the handle on the top and that would make it move up or down. Each of these are from a different manufacturer. So each one varies just slightly. For this project, I'm going to be fixing up each car switch and then mounting them onto a custom wooden frame. So this first piece is an old Otis car switch. Now this is the smaller style as they had multiple different designs. This particular one, you pull the handle out to unlock it. And once you do that, you can then slide it into the up or down position. Also right here is a really good example of why I'm building the custom stands for these because you'll notice these are very unstable and you really can't mess with them without knocking it over. Removing the front cover of the car switch reveals what's inside of this piece. Now before we take a look at how it works, I'm just going to pull this piece out because it's not actually attached and it's missing the screws. So I'm going to remove these really gross wires and then screw this board back down onto the metal. Now once that's done, we can get an idea of how this thing works. You'll notice there is the metal bar on the bottom and when the handle is turned, it pushes against these contacts. And just by looking at how this is, I can tell this is a two speed controller because there are two contacts on each side. This would be for the other direction. So lift up the handle and then slide it down. You'll see the metal bar connects the first set of contacts and then all the way down completes the second. Now it's time to build the wooden stand to mount this piece too. Now each stand is going to follow the same basic idea. One piece of wood will be for the base. The car switch will sit on this piece of wood. Then two more pieces of wood will be mounted to the back of the base. These will screw into the holes on the car switch, securing it to the frame. These are the three pieces I cut for this car switch, and I put it together after painting them, and it is now time to put the car switch onto this frame. So here it is mounted to the new frame, and you'll see here whenever I move the handle, I can move it just fine without knocking the entire piece over. So this is definitely a huge win. Now that this is done, it's time to move on to the next one. The next piece is this old Burwack Elevator Company car switch. This one is unique because it has a light switch on the front, which is something I've never seen before. Like a lot of these old car switches, the locking mechanism is broken, and it appears that the original handle was replaced with an Otis one. So just like the other one, the top can be removed, revealing the inside. Here you can see the light switch and how it's mounted, along with the different contacts. This one works similar to the Otis one with the metal bar on the bottom. You can see as I turn the handle, the metal piece moves connecting the different contacts. So just like the Otis one, I made three pieces of wood, a base and two support pieces and put them together just like I did for the Otis, except this one is a little bit different because of the way that it is mounted. And here it is mounted to the frame. This one definitely needed a frame because it was very hard to mess with this thing when it was not attached but now this thing can move freely and I'm really happy with the way that this one came out. So now it's time to move on to the next one. The next piece is this Houghton car switch. Now this one has been heavily painted on, which is unfortunate, but it is still functional. I did the best I could to touch it up and then repolish up the Houghton elevators logo. Removing the cover on this one reveals the inside and we can see that this is only a single speed car switch. So there's only one set of contacts for each direction. Besides the cosmetics, this one didn't need any more work, so all that was left to do was build the stand. And here's what it looks like mounted to the stand. The next piece is this old American Elevator Company car switch. This one has a different style handle, and there's actually a feature within this handle that needs to be fixed. This handle can be unscrewed, and after a lot of threads, it finally comes off, revealing a metal bar. This metal bar is actually part of the locking mechanism, and it's missing a button. So in order to fix the button, I bought this small spring which would push the button back up, keeping it locked, and then I 3D printed a new button. So the way this would work is the spring would be put onto the rod first, then the button would be pushed on and lined up with the hole in the metal rod, and then this little filler piece would get pushed in there to lock the button in place. Now that the locking mechanism is working again, it's time to take a look on the inside of this piece. 
Pulling off the cover reveals the inside. Starting up here with the locking mechanism, pushing in the button on the top of the handle moves this metal arm down which unlocks the handle. It might not be as clear on this piece, but this one is two speeds. And the last step is to build the frame and put everything together. And now this piece is complete. This was one of the ones that definitely suffered from not having a custom frame for it, but now that it does, this piece can be interacted with and it works just fine. The new locking mechanism is amazing, and you really have to push in on that button to make it move. The final piece in this project is this Westinghouse car switch, and this one is going to require the most work. The first thing is the locking mechanism, and right now it's doing the opposite of what you think it would. Pressing in on the lever actually locks the handle from moving instead of unlocking it. So I'm going to have to design something to fix this. And the second thing is the contact arrangement. Currently, a critical piece is missing in the center of the car switch that allows the contacts to close when the handle is rotated. At the moment, rotating the handle does absolutely nothing and the contacts are free to move as they wish. So I bought some springs which fit in between the contacts and push them closed. This may not seem very practical at the moment, but once I make the piece for the center, this will all work as it should. Actually making this center piece was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be because I didn't have any piece to base this off of. I only had a picture. So I did what I could to replicate the piece that I saw in the photo. I went through multiple versions, changing the different cuts each time, and I finally worked out one that I think works. Now this was actually a three speed car switch and you'll notice there's not really a good separation between the three speeds on this current piece. After I made this video, I made one more version of this center piece which separated the three speeds very nicely. As for the locking mechanism, I've never actually seen one of these in the field working so I didn't really know what to base this off of. I ended up using a nut, a bolt, some washers, a spring, and some glue to create this makeshift locking mechanism. I'm pretty sure something similar was used in the field to make these things lock, but I'm really happy with how this works. Pressing in on the lever pushes back the lock, which allows the handle to be moved to the left or the right. When the handle is returned to its home position, it locks itself automatically. And then of course, just like the other parts, I made the mounting frame with the wood and put it all together. And before the cover is put back on, here it is working with the cover off. And that completes all of these car switches. This particular Westinghouse one is the one I'm most proud of because it needed the most work. So let's go ahead and put all these together and take a look at the finished result. Now that all of these pieces are complete, they will be sent to the Elevator Museum where they will be on display for everybody to see. Thanks for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.